Check this out. Something rather interesting in the skies over Cavite in the Philippines, a funnel cloud. Now, I didn't see any reports of this actually touching down, so not quite a tornado, but boy, a uh, pretty scary sight out there. All thanks to this low pressure area located over the Sulu Sea, helping to flare up some convection. And when you get some of these thunderstorms that do move on shore, what happens is that they hit the ground and it starts to rotate due to friction. Not quite your classic supercell development but still can bring some tornadic events. So pretty interesting with that. Otherwise, you know, parts of the Phil uh, Visayas down towards northwestern Mindanao over towards uh, Pelawan, you are looking at plenty of rainfall, a few locations over 100 millimeters reported in just the course of the last 24 hours. So plenty of showers with this low pressure area. As it moves further towards the west, though, I am expecting it to dissipate as it gets wrapped up with the southwest monsoon. But really, I mean, it's a low pressure area, but more or less, it's been kind of this collision of the east release with the southwest monsoon causing a broad rotation uh, over the Sulu Sea there. But you can see as we go ahead through Thursday and the Friday, still scattered showers across the west coast, even extending down towards Palawan. Yeah, you can see some areas in additional about 5 to 20 millimeters of total precipitation. Very classic type of rainfall for this time of year. Taking a look at the forecast for Mindanao, Cagayan de Oro, 29 out there. Cebu, you're going to be looking at showers here on your Thursday, even over towards Bacolod as well, and back towards Manila. Thunderstorms in your forecast, mainly through your afternoon hours, primarily as you get that daytime heating continuing to kick in. Now, as you might be uh, checking out here, of course, this low pressure area, very, very interesting. I don't want to shy away from that. It's brought a tornado, heavy rainfall. Let's talk about the broader picture because the extended forecast uh, it, it has some... Um, uh, things that I want you to take a look at. Let's actually pull up this picture here. Here's our low. Like I said, we got the southwest monsoon, the easterlies, kind of that broad rotation mixed in there, south of the rainy season front towards the north. And then there's this tropical wave towards the southeast of Guam. This is way out here uh, around the, the Chuuk area. I mean, we're talking about 100, about five, 600 miles towards the south and east of Guam. Long range guidance does show possibility of some development out of that. In fact, uh, you take a look at this. Uh, we are currently uh, in a positive phase MGO. It's starting to move out of our area, but uh, that does help out with a bit of convection. Plenty of moisture located across our easterlies too. Of course, there's the rainy season front. Here's our low pressure area. All these areas in red indicating how much moisture. The redder it is, the, the more precipitation. This basically, if you squeeze the entire atmosphere and all the rain fell out of it, the areas in pink would indicate about six. 700 millimeters of a precipitation but this is what i'm talking about so our gfs guidance it's been alone on this but it's been doing it for about five six days now is trying to develop something out here in the philippine sea you can see it right there trying to kick something up around taiwan maybe okinawa in the southern japanese islands it's not until the end of the month starting into july 1st over towards the second this is the ensembles also kind of keying in on that something towards the northeast of luzon taiwan southern japanese islands now keep in mind the ecmwf cfmc navgem these are all global numerical models not really pulling much on this at all the gfs has been alone but repetitive nature of the GFS is why I'm pretty interested in what could happen here. Uh, yeah, as we start off the month of July. June has been so quiet. Long range guidance, though, could increase as we kick into the next week, week and a half. Sea surface temperatures out here, by the way, also still exceptionally warm, which would help be uh, conducive for the development of any tropical system so yeah of course we're going to keep an eye on this area i mean look at the the ecmwf trying to pick a low pressure area up somewhere on the easterly so it's uh it's that time of year if you have any questions let me know i know i'm very vague i'm saying there's a potential of something developing um that's that's what you get with uh, this type of setup in a long range could change but uh, at least at this time uh, it seems like our quiet tropics that we've had, thankfully, since Odette made landfall uh, in uh, southeastern Visayas, northeastern Mindanao, things have been calm, but unfortunately, it could start to pick back up again. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. If you want to help support this channel, check out our Patreon. These are everybody who's been donating. Garmin, you're a legend. I can't thank you enough, but everybody else, I mean, you're just, you're all heroes in my books, and uh, thank you very much, uh, $6, $10 a month. 
uh, you can keep these updates going, especially if we do get a typhoon starting to form. If you are out here and uh, you did see that tornado as well, please share your reports with me. I want to see if it uh, did make touchdown or if it did cause any damage. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there.